You're listening to Agenda on the wireless from Age UK. I'm Martin Lewis. Cycling without age was an idea which originated in Denmark in 2012. And since 2015, the project has spread to more than 33 countries. The idea was to help older people get out on bicycles, but by offering them passenger rides on a trishore. Time and Talents is an organisation in South London who've signed up to the scheme and Julie Banks has been along to find out more. My name's Alex Evans and I'm Director of Time and Talents. We're a settlement based in Rotherhithe in South East London. We've been here for 130 years and our goal is to bring people together for fun and friendship and mutual support. And it's a truly intergenerational sort of community hub, isn't it, here? Absolutely. So the most important thing for us is bringing people into places together Um, And what we find is that if we put people who wouldn't normally meet each other in the same place, all sorts of magic happens and people just build relationships spontaneously. That's one of the things that's exciting about this project. And can you tell me a little bit about the foundation of Time and Talents, how it came about? So we were set up by what, what are referred to as women of education and leisure in 1868 I think and um, really there was a there was a social movement at the time of people who were doing fairly well um, particularly women who had lots of skills they'd been to university for the first time they felt that they wanted to give something back to the community and of course at that time they weren't working and so they thought well how can we actually do great things for people and make something of um, the good things that have happened to us And so uh, they decided that they wanted to work in some of the the worst parts of London and across the world. In fact, there are settlements also in, for example, Chicago. And they said, how can we help these poor communities? How can we bring them learning? How can we give them opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise have? Um, So what we still have is this sense that people who are doing quite well can help people who aren't doing so well. But what we have now, I think, is a much stronger sense of mutuality in that actually everybody has something to give, uh, even if it's just friendship. That's one of the most important things of all. So can you tell us about the range of activities that take place here? We have a a huge range of things happening. We have things, a lot of things for older people, uh, particularly for older people who are isolated. So we have things like a stroke club, a Happy Mondays group, which is a, 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 a general older people's group, particularly for those who are very frail and isolated and elderly. We had things at the Happy Mondays group, like, for example, we had a visit from a mobile zoo where people got to meet meerkats and a skunk. Uh, which could have been smelly, but it was okay, and uh, stroke to python and so on. With our older people's groups, what we like is for people to have the opportunity to keep trying new things because we think that keeps you young and keeps you healthy and active and just happy. And then we also have things for a range of ages. So, for example, we have things for children and families, Uh, We have activities which are intergenerational, for example, Crafty Beasts, which is uh, a regular group which brings together older people who maybe want to get out a bit more with children and their families who want to learn craft skills, come together and do those kind of things. And we have things like ukulele classes and so on. Frankly, I'm surprised at the things we do when I work here. So uh, every day there's something different. And we're in quite an interesting part of of London as well. And the building you're in has got a fascinating history. Just uh, can you tell us briefly about that? I can. Um, I mean, it must be said that one of the things I first was told when I arrived here was that um, Time and Talents is the place that works with older people in a mortuary, which was, um, I wasn't entirely sure that was the reputation we wanted to have, but it is an absolutely beautiful space. It means it's very um, accessible, so we can get people in wheelchairs through very easily, that kind of thing. But it's also a gorgeous place to be uh, with mature gardens Um, we've got people in the room next door eating beautiful uh, vegetables and salads that they've grown in the garden themselves Um, and it's something of a sort of oasis of calm Uh, if you go into the building and you go sort of around the building you wouldn't know that you were in central urban London so we're very lucky to have this beautiful building Um, and as a mortuary it has all sorts of interesting uh, and sort of dark stories associated with it but you would never know that it's just a lovely happy place to be. Yeah I must uh, must admit it feels like a very calm peaceful place lots of beautiful light and and a really lovely setting and so is it is it a sort of drop-in centre can people just come along during the hours that you're open? Sure. So um, we have a lot of groups which are for targeted groups of people. So, for example, our stroke club uh, is for people who are actually very lacking mobility. Um, maybe they've had strokes and they come along with their carers and so on. So people will come to that because they've been referred to as by an agency of some sort. But we do have open access things. For example, we have mindfulness classes, which anyone can come to. We have, as I say, a ukulele group or life drawing classes, which people can come to. Um, what we like to do is a mixture of things where we know that people have a particular need you know maybe you're 
um, needing a bit more support. And with that, what we do is we find people who need our help and we invite them and bring them along. But then we also want to make sure we've got doors which are always open so that people can just come along and happen upon things and find fun things to do with each other. Great. Now, uh, obviously, I'm here this afternoon to talk specifically about the Cycling Without Age project that you've got running here. Uh, I know you're going to show me the bikes in just a minute, so I'll maybe hold off on asking you too many questions until we head out and about. But if anyone wants to get in touch with Time and Talents or find out more about the work that you do, how can they do that? They can go to our website. Um, If you want to volunteer, you can go and uh, apply to be a volunteer on our website. But we're also very open. What we tend to find with Time and Talents is that people literally do just turn up on our doorstep and say, I want to do something or I want to try something or let's have a go. And 90 99% of the time we say, yeah, go on then, let's try it. So if anyone wants to get in touch, go to our website and there's all sorts of contact details there. Fantastic. Well, we'll head out and have a look at the bikes. Great, let's do it. Here we are in front of the bikes. So um, just explain to me a little bit about how you came to be involved in cycling without age. So we were actually approached by a really fantastic local uh, trust called United St. Saviour's Charity. Um, We'd worked with them on a lot of things in the past and they thought we were the kind of organisation. As I say, people turn up on our doorstep and say, do you want to try something? And we say yes. And so they told us about this great project that they'd seen um, in Denmark and told us about these bikes. And we said, well, we don't know anything about cycling. And they said, yes, but you know about community and you can learn about cycling. So we said, "Okay, then. So um, they paid for the bikes, which was incredibly generous of them. Um, We got the men from our older men's shed, which we run over the road to build as a, um, what do you call it, a shelter for them. Um, And we started going out to sheltered housing uh, and care homes and taking people out for rides in the local parks. We're lucky to have quite a bit of green space nearby um, and fairly quiet roads. And we found that by getting local cyclists, you know, London cyclists really know their cycling and they're quite passionate about it. So we could sort of um, use their enthusiasm to get the project off the ground. And then what it meant was that older people who are in the area, who often feel very much in the minority now because we've got a quite a sort of fast changing area which is becoming much younger, had opportunities to meet people who otherwise they'd never have met. And then they get to share stories, they get to feel like they've got something in common and they build friendships. Great. And so these bikes, uh, they're they're tricycles, but they're with with a a sort of double seat at the front, basically, Mm. isn't it? With a a rain cover over the front as well, I can see. And then the the cyclist um, sits behind the passengers and and pedals them around. That's right. Um, They're incredibly good fun to ride, uh, both to sit in there as a passenger and to actually ride. And in fact, the first time I sat in one and rode it, I hadn't ridden a bike since I was about 12 and I couldn't sleep that night because I was so excited and I just kept thinking about wanting to do it again. Um, I think the other thing is that when you're sitting in the bike, either you're, you're riding it or you're in the seat being a passenger, suddenly everybody can see you and everybody is well disposed to you everybody is kind traffic gets out of your way and treats you really well because they think it's a wonderful thing to see in action and the other thing is it does is it gives older people visibility because otherwise you can end up sort of being a bit forgotten and a bit left behind especially if you're in sheltered accommodation or somewhere like that but it means that suddenly you're the center of attention everyone can see you and actually you feel kind of important i think that's great i was enjoying giving the royal wave and everyone who gets in there and gives royal waves to people thinks they're the first person who's done that so lovely okay well uh, i'm looking forward to hopefully having a a, a ride in one of these this afternoon so it stays dry yes looks like it's going to i'm mark um i work here at um, time and talents in rotherhithe um, and i help coordinate the cycling without age project which involves um, working with our group of lovely volunteers who come in and take the bikes out to various Um, sheltered homes and nursing homes in the area to offer bike rides to older people. What was your reaction when you first heard about the project? I was completely blown away to be honest. I'd um, I'd started working here in January and it wasn't my original job here Um, and I saw the bikes that we have out the back because we've got these three really lovely Christiania bikes and then um, as I was working here I started I was working only one day a week and then I started coming in more and I started seeing these cycling volunteers coming in and picking up the bikes and taking them out um, and when I found out what the project was, I was completely blown away. I thought it was super cool. I'm, a, I'm like a cyclist myself and I, I cycle every day in London. So it was, it was really great to see. 
Have you had a chance to trial the bikes as well and you know, take them out for a spin, as it were? Uh, yeah, I actually I make a point of going out on the bikes as often as I can, to be honest, whether it's... Um, lately, we've been building a lot of um, new connections with a lot of new um, sheltered homes in the area, and that involves a lot of kind of taking the bikes out as a demonstration and showing people, so I try and do that as often as I can. And um, sometimes I'll go out with the volunteers as well. And uh, how many people do you think you've been able to reach in the community, roughly, uh, with the project? Um, so there's been a lot of kind of one-off rides and things like that. I think at the moment we've got about um, eight or nine kind of regular um, residences that we go and visit, um, of which have about between maybe four and eight people in the different places who are kind of our regular um, beneficiaries who come on the rides with us. It's probably about 30, 35 people at the moment. And how, uh, how are you able to identify people that might benefit from Cycling Without Age? Um, a lot of the wardens at the at these sheltered homes have been really helpful and they've introduced us to a lot of people who they think um, might benefit from the service. And so a lot of it's involved kind of um, door knocking in some of, the, in some of the homes and meeting people directly and speaking to them about the project and about the bikes. Um, also, we have our team that works on a lot of older people's projects here at Time and Talents, uh, Cindy and Ollie, and they've been able to put me um, give me the names of some people that they know who live locally who they think will benefit from the service. And what kind of reaction have you had from people so far? Everyone smiles when they see the bikes go by. Um, everyone smiles, everyone waves. Um, it's great. Um, I've heard stories of people who um, have uh, been on the bikes and kind of you know reached parts of the local area where they've been living for like many years um, but haven't accessed for so many many years for kind of for like mobility reasons and, and things like that. So yeah, there's often a, a really great response. Great. Fantastic, well I'm looking forward to uh, getting out and about and uh, seeing how it all works. Yeah, join us. <laughs> so I'm now buckled in and my companion for the journey is Jean. Hi Jean. Hello. And this is the first time you've been out on, on this. Yes. Right. Uh, so when were you last out on a, on a bike? Oh, years ago. I used to be a great cyclist in, my old, you know, in the old days. I'm not very keen on cyclists now because they've run me over twice. Oh gosh, really? In the That's park, a... you know, with it. and of course, being old-fashioned, we always had the bell. You know, my dad never let us out with that. Ring your ring your bell. You know, let them know you're coming behind you and all the rest of it. Yeah. How long have you lived in this area, Jean? I've been here just a year past the 14th of March in this block. Okay. And did you grow up in South London? No, I, uh, I'm Scottish. Sure. I was um, brought up in a farm. And North Scotland, you know, North East Scotland. So, uh, what brought you down to London? I came down here when I was 17, so I'm more of a Londoner than, a, you know, about 67 years I've been down here. And do you normally get out and about in the week at all? I don't go out as much now as I used to. I, I, can't, uh, I can't get used to this communal living sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've been here over a year and I, I don't know, I still feel... Bit of a stranger, if you know what I mean. I, I don't. I do keep myself to myself. I really. I'm not really. And since I lost my sight, most of my well, most of my sight I've lost. I miss doing, you know, the usual things I used to do: knitting, crosswords, reading. You know. But I'm getting on with the audio books now, which I quite enjoy. Oh yeah. My daughter takes me most of the time. She takes me or some of the grandchildren down to the library, which is great. And what did what made you want to come out on uh, one of the bikes? <laughs> I had no idea. I just thought, well, they came round. I forget his name now. Came round last week at a fortnight ago, and I said, oh well, I might be interested. And of course, Naz came up this morning. She said, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, just, well, I said I've taken my medication, and I was only preparing lunch. I was just going to sit down and listen to a book. If so, I thought, well, sun's shining. Why not? <laughs> What do you think of it so far? Great, great to be out. No, I um, I used to go. We we great walkers. We were, you know, my family and I. And uh, I miss that. I feel sometimes I come to the door and I, or I trying to cross the road. Although some people are very very helpful. If I if I'm frightened, I say, Would you mind helping me across the road or tell me when the lights green or something? You know, and uh, I've never had any problems there. But I do feel a bit nervy sometimes. I think you lose your confidence a bit, sort of thing. Mm. It's a long time since I've been in Southwark Park. I used to take the grandchildren here, something, quite a bit. 
I've not I've not been before and I didn't realise it was such a big park. It's quite a big park, yes, it is really. It used to be I used to take them to one of the there was a one o'clock club which we used to have great fun with the the little ones, you know. How many grandchildren do you have? Um eight. Eight. I think it's eight. It's a great grandchild. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh lovely. But they're all growing up now, you know, the, the great grandchild. She was 15 the other week, so uh, give him a wave. Oh, it's busy here by the children's playgrounds. Yeah, no, this all... must have been, yes, uh, this is, I should know this. And the, lake, the lake on our left with some very busy ducks and geese in the playground just on our right. It's nice to get a bit of interaction with people, isn't it? They give you a wave yes. when you go past. <laughs> We're coming up to the bandstand. It's a beautiful bandstand oh, in yes, the park. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Trees are lovely, aren't they? It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful mm. day. Mm. It's not been bad this week. It's nice yesterday, too. My daughter came down. She won't believe this when I tell her I've been out in the park. <laughs> what will you say to her? She'll see you on. <laughs> She say, "Who talked you into that?" Because <laughs> she knows how I keep myself to myself quite a bit, you know. Do you think you'll come out again? Oh yes, I would come out again. Yeah. yeah I don't know who would have thought this up, but it's uh, it's great. Well, Jean, thank you very much. Oh, I'm going to change bikes now. It's a pleasure. Are you? Oh, Get out she's of it. leaving me. <laughs> pedal power that was just been behind us going around the park there is Eleanor. Eleanor, you volunteer for the, the project uh, Time and Talents. How did you get involved? Um, well, I live really nearby and cycling is just what keeps me sane and it's what I do as much as possible and I love it. And when I read, I also really um, care a lot about projects that are working with the elderly, which uh, I actually don't have any involvement with usually because I'm pretty busy but this was a, a project right on my doorstep and I already cycle a tricycle myself because uh, I have a four-year-old toddler which uh, a friend of mine in France introduced me to when she had her third baby um, she hadn't been a cyclist before but uh, this this uh, tr amazing tricycle converted her completely and it was just at the time when I was about six months pregnant and rather um, reluctantly coming to terms with the idea that I had to look for a pusher um, and wondering how on earth I was going to cope without my bicycle and uh, so, so I did, never looked for the pusher. I came back to England and I looked for the tricycle so, so I, I am familiar with riding around a, on a tricycle with a, with a little girl. How easy actually are these bikes to ride? Um, well it's the first time I'm riding an electrically powered bicycle which now with, with a couple of passengers I realise actually is a good idea. So that just took a little bit of adjustment, but it's not so difficult. I'm, I'm, I can ride a bike and I drive and so, you know, this is just a, another couple of little sort of skills, um, you know, things that you have to do, but it's really not complicated. Most people can manage, I think. <laughs> and what kind of reaction do you get from people when you, when you take them out for a ride? Oh, um, be, well, I think people are quite sort of nervous to begin with um but then usually just really really happy afterwards so so yeah <laughs> it's a good thing and how long have you been involved with the project um well the project itself is very young here so uh so i not very long um but i was one of i suppose i one of the first people to to um get involved and it's just still it's still in the early stages so uh, i think today was the first time that we was stopping off at, at this home in particular um, and I think it's good for the word to get out because I can understand that people might be um, reticent and it's slightly tricky to actually just manoeuvre onto the bike to get there in the first place and uh, so I can understand people being a little bit nervous and hesitant but I really think it's worth it. <laughs> you get some great reactions as you're driving around in these, really or cycling nice. around. Yeah it's really nice to see people waving and I, I love because I was, uh, my, um, I was one of the first people to have. Well, in Paris, I was living in Paris, and I was, I was cycling a Brompton, which is a folding bicycle, and I really loved it. There, it was a complete rarity, um, and people had never seen it before. And I had old ladies and dustbin men, and 
you know, children, all, you know, sometimes hailing me, stopping me, calling me, wanting to know more about this bicycle. Um, and I think that we've got a little bit of that novelty factor again with, with, with these tricycles. So it's nice to make friends that way. Great. Well, hopefully there'll be a, a common sight in all the parks across the country um, before too long. Eleanor, thanks very much. Thank you. So we've taken a quick pit stop here in the gardens of Southwark Park and uh, I'm just going to have a quick word with Dave now, who's one of the other volunteers. Hi Dave. Hello there. Um, so tell me, how did you get involved with the uh, Cycling Without Age project? Um, I saw a tweet, um, well, late last year I think it was, saying we, we were looking for volunteers for Cycling Without Age with like a sort of short video. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. So I um, emailed Time Talents and they said, after, after a little while, they said, yeah, we're doing training on this date. Um, more recently, I've been actually been able to do some dates with the Time and Talents to take some people out. Great, that's fantastic. And are you quite big on cycling anyway? Uh, I do cycle quite a lot. I cycle to and from work every day, but it, my, my bike is like a little tiny three-speed Brompton. So it's quite a sort of different size, really. That's, uh, that's quite nippy, quick, and the trikes are quite a sort of different experience, really. Does it take quite a while to get used to them? No, not too bad, actually. I mean, it, it, they are physically quite a lot bigger and they're quite, quite a little bit more to get them get sort of going. But um, the training was quite good. It's obviously pretty good exercise getting out and about, but what else do you love about the project? Well, it's quite interesting some of the people you meet. The lady, lady I met last week, she, she hadn't been, she lives quite nearby, but she hadn't been around Southwark Park before. And she'd, um, she worked, used to work as a cinematographer. So we were discussing the uh, sort of films she used to make. We actually, they were actually filming in Southwark Park last week. So we, we actually asked her, well, what production is this? And like, who's in it? And whatever because that was um, over the, just over the other side of the park here so yeah it was quite interesting and uh, and do you notice uh, once people have experienced it for the first time uh, are they normally keen to come back and have another go yeah some some really are yeah uh, the, the, the people we out, out with last week seemed really keen to have another go I mean I'm, I'm not I've not seen them this week I mean but like I'd say I'm not, I'm not sure if I'll be doing the session when they next come along but they, people seem really keen to come back yeah Lovely. Well, hopefully it'll be uh, the sort of thing we'll see gr spread and expand across the country because it seems to be uh, sort of a win-win for everyone at the moment. So um, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, so the third of the volunteers out and about today on the bikes is Haji. Hi, Haji. Hi, hello. Uh, how did you get involved with this project? I like cycling. I, uh, I cycle everywhere. And uh, uh, when they were introduced uh, um, uh, last year, I jumped on because uh, I've been a volunteer for uh, Time and Talent for like three years now. Yeah, I do gardening, I do um, um, all the people's group, um, uh, Happy Mondays group. So I was already there. So when they introduced it, I jumped on a bandwagon. <laughs> and you get quite a reaction, don't you, when you're out and about and people see them? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they are uh, heady turners, to be honest. People like them. Uh, uh, we get wave all the time, people wave at us. <laughs> it's a real talking point. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. And uh, how has it been having the passengers on board? What, what kind of um, interaction do you get to have with them? Um, it's, that's another good thing because um, um, every week we get to meet uh, new people and uh, uh, talk to them. It's really good, really good to be able to take people outside. Some of them they haven't even been. For example, today we just picked up a, a lady who just live around the corner from the park, but she hasn't been here. So it's really good to to be able to to take them out and about Great. and it's a beautiful park you've got here on your doorstep is, as well it is it is lovely and uh, um, we've always got forests so maybe next week we might take them to the forest as well what kind of reactions do people get once they've had a ride and you drop them back off uh, um, where they live what, what kind of things do they normally say to you uh, huge thank you and uh, uh, you know smile to be able to uh, put smile on uh, as somebody's is really good really good they're really they're, they're really happy taking them out yeah Right. Well, hopefully it will uh, grow and expand and, and lots of people around this area will get to experience it because it seems to be a really great thing. So. We hope so, we hope so, we hope so. <laughs> Adji, thank you very much. Thank you, no problem. Julie Banks there, finding out about cycling without age. You're listening to The Wireless from Age UK.